Coming up next, Frank and Mary here in Framingham with our wonderful guest this week, uh, Susan Cody, uh, Options Counselor at Bay Path Elder Services. Susan's going to be talking about how she helps people over 60 and really anybody else who, if they have a disability, uh, obtain uh, services and resources in this area. Welcome to this episode of Frank and Mary in Framingham. I'm Grace O'Donnell, Director of Elder Services at the Callahan Center. And I'm Art Bergeron. Uh, my day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell. Uh, we have my office is in Framingham. We're the biggest law firm outside of Boston. Everybody gets to do what they like doing. I like doing elder law, but this is not about elder law. This is about my friends Frank and Mary uh, and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. Frank and Mary have a very simple goal in life. They want to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's here in Framingham, that means right here. And so the question is, who are the people uh, that they need to know? What are the programs that they need to know about in order to do just that? Uh, Grace O'Donnell finds these great guests to, be, uh, to appear on these shows because she knows everybody in her role as a uh, senior center director here at the Callahan Center. Grace, whom do we have today? Hi, Arthur. Our guest today is Susan Cody, Options Counselor mm -hmm. at Bay Path Elder Services. Hello, everybody. Thanks for having me. Susan, thank you so much for coming on. And actually, as I mentioned earlier, Grace and I were talking earlier, Susan's one of those people who is so famous, we even know her outside her family. <laughs> we know her out here in Marlboro and a whole bunch of different places. Oh, yes. I make it all to all the towns. <laughs> So Susan, we're hoping you can enlighten some of our uh, listeners and viewers with what the options counseling is all about and who benefits from that. Oh, sure, definitely. So um, options counseling is really part of the, the Metro West Aging and Disability Resource Consortia. It's a mouthful. So we condense into the ADRC of the Metro West area, and we're the primary function of the ADRCs. And Really the goal of that ADRC is to provide a no wrong door, meaning you know anyone who calls in can get streamlined information and access to the information they're looking for without having to make 10 different phone calls. So that's the whole goal. But options counseling is, you know, it's a short-term interactive program that's really designed to help people make informed choices about how, when, and where they can receive services and supports in the community. Um, and we work with people who are any adult of any age living with a disability, any seniors, their caregivers, anyone who is looking to gain information. That's who we work with. And it doesn't matter what setting they're in. They could be living in the community. They could be in rehab. Um, so that... Um, any age, any income, any insurance. We'll work with anybody. Okay. That's good to know. And do you help people figure out, um, for instance, what the range of services are available to them, like in-home care and things like that? Yes, exactly. So the kinds of things we help people work on is really based on what they want to get out of it. Um, so it's a wide range of things that we help people with. Um, In-home services and supports, whether you're in your own home or apartment, um, different kinds of housing options. If you are looking to either downsize or, or move to a setting that has a little bit more supports and help compare the two if you're trying to figure out if you should stay home or move on to another type of setting, um, you know, transportation, um, benefit programs. We're uh, both the options counselors at Bay Path. We're both Shine counselors, so we we help people understand their health insurance options as well. Terrific! Yeah, that that's a big part of it. At at this age, with all of us encountering different kinds of health issues. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any uh, 
specific examples of some unique uh, circumstances that you have put in place for people? I, I seem to recall somebody um, maybe who needed something like a, uh, uh, am I try- the word I'm trying to use, like a support animal. Um, I seem to recall hearing there were some circumstances where people were able to help arrange that because that was what a person specifically needed for themselves. Right. Yes. I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, even a lot of the programs at BPATH and especially options counseling where it's a person centered program. Um, and what that means is the focus is on the person we're working with their individual goals, preferences and needs. And we work with them to help them meet those needs, whatever they say they are. Um, and, and a lot of times animals do come up. Um, so we do have to have a big base of knowledge of what's out there. And we do work very closely with our information referral department. Um, and they have developed many, many resources, including support animals. Or if you do have to go to rehab, what can you do with that, uh, your cat or dog at home, things like that. But we always, you know, when we're working with people, they are the experts on themselves and we are the experts on the resources. So it's a, we really use it that team approach. And I, and, and Susan, I recall now that, now that Grace was mentioning that I recall one of those uh, cases where the issue was that someone needed to get to the hospital very fast. And the question was, so where do you put the dog? You know, and, 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 and they were, you know, the, the, but you really developed, you know, services for that. You really developed links to, 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 to places where you can have the dog put up for some period of time, which, which when you think about it for a single person, mm-hmm. that's, that's a crucial thing. I mean, that's the thing they worry the most about. I still remember those pictures from the, you know, from the hurricanes in, in Houston a few years ago. And that was the big issue. People wouldn't leave their house because they needed to leave the dog behind, you know? And, exactly. And you, so it, it's, it's truly, when, when you say it's like no, you know, the, no wrong door, you know, it's literally just anybody can call mm-hmm. you and, and you, you're there you, not to tell them about a particular program, but to figure out the problem. Yep, exactly, exactly. And if anyone, you know, anytime, we always encourage people to call the Bay Path and and talk to an information referral specialist. If that's, if we don't have a resource or understanding what you're needing, that's some, that's an unmet need. And we're going to research and build that uh, resource base for you and and help you find that answer. Um, and, you know, options counseling is a, goes a little bit above and beyond what information referral specialist does is in normal times, um, we focus our work going out and meeting the person face to face one on one, I'll meet with people in their homes, I've met people at Dunkin Donuts, or I've met a caregiver at a picnic table outside their office. So in normal times, that's really how we build that relationship and build the trust and really get to know the person. And sometimes it could be one visit and the person, um, re- after reviewing what they what their goals for themselves, we help them understand um, what resources and supports and, are out there that can help bring them to their goal. Um, we help with next steps if they are pursuing that goal and follow up. So sometimes it could be a, a couple of visits. Other times I've worked with people for, you know, three or four months until they finally get an understanding and of what direction they want to go in. Once you get to be over 65, even if you don't have any problems, just give them a call just so that you yeah. can find out what they do. You know, our motto has always been know your options before you need them. I think yeah. that's important for people to be able to plan better because it's so much easier to take information in when you're not at a crisis point. If exactly. you wait until everything is in a kerfuffle, it's harder to sort out, well, what is the best decision for me right now? But I'm sure your counselors are well equipped in helping people um, come to those conclusions. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely. We work people for future planning or if there is a current need either way. But I think the state created this program, um, gosh, well over 10 years ago, 
because there is a lot of information out there. And I'm sure if you a lot, do a lot of Googling and you get a lot of mixed information and, and um, it's hard. And sometimes people need help sorting through all that information and knowing what's accurate and what's not accurate or, um, or old information. And like you said, not many people plan ahead. So it's nice knowing it just kind of gives you peace of mind having a plan if something were to happen. So. And I, I think people can equate it similar to shine where they realize those of you who are trained in this way have this wealth of knowledge that the rest of us lack. And you know, all of the right questions to ask to help people come to the conclusions for the mm -hmm. decisions they need to make. And just as people have come to really trust shine as giving them unbiased opinions for health insurance, your options counselors are able to give people unbiased opinions to help them decide the range of options available to them in this whole host of what do we do uh, when we're dealing with some difficult situations. Yes, definitely. In every town, no matter what town you live in, you have access to an options counselor at your independent living center or your aging services access point like Bay Path, for sure. But pretty much the, 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 the goal of this program is to help people learn how they can stay in the community and prevent nursing home placement prematurely. Um, a lot of people think, oh, the next step is a nursing home, but they you know, they don't consider that there might be some community-based options that can keep them home a little bit longer. Yeah, those support services really have grown over time as the population of people over 65 has grown and more people are mm -hmm. saying, you know, I would rather not be as limited as I would be in a nursing home. And there are some people that the nursing home is the best option for them, but there are mm -hmm. others that that might not be for another 10 years. So that's terrific that you provide this yeah. resource so that people can really have that, that choice of knowing, well, do I need to go in that direction? And what are the things that I should be finding out about that? Or what else can I do if what I want to do is stay in my own home? Or if I want to downsize, I'm sure that's right. something that you help people a lot with. Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah, we help make sure they have a good understanding of the pros and cons of each option out there, whether, you know, they're coming home from rehab. Should they be going home? Should they, um, you know, stay long term at the at the nursing home? Should they consider assisted living or rest home? So we make sure they understand the eligibility for, you know, services, if they're going to come into their home, if they're going to qualify for any subsidies or, um, what the actual costs are, you know, compared in home versus other types of settings, just so they can make the decision. We're just there to provide them with the whole picture of the pros and cons for each option they might be considering. And do you have a lot of sons and daughters coming to you for help with their parents if, if uh, perhaps a parent might have some cognitive issues? We do, yes. Definitely. We do uh, work also with, you know, the adult sons and daughters. Um, and, and with options counseling, we oh, even if there is cognitive issues or memory impairment with the, the elder, we still are going to focus on what that mom or dad, what their goals are, what they want for themselves. Um, so we, we take everyone's perspective into consideration you know, what's working, what's not working to get that information across the, the fam all the family members gives a lot of information about what's really going on. So, and, and it's helpful sometimes the family members don't really talk to each other about what's working, what's not working. So everyone really learns a lot when, when we have those types of visits together. Yeah. And I imagine sometimes there are times where one, uh, daughter of the family might not agree with a parent's decision, but another is agreeing with it. And I imagine that that takes some negotiating to try to help people understand that really is about the particular senior and what yes, their choices are. Exactly. And it is, you know, a lot of times talking with the sons or daughters that, you know, everyone has a right to make his or her own decision. 
regardless of what other people think about that decision. So we really do um, emphasize self-determination when we're working with, with people and their families. Grace, Grace, I often get those kinds of questions from the kids. Like, you know, <clears throat> isn't there something I can do? Ma's just, you know, going down the wrong road. This is really a terrible idea. <laughs> I have to keep emphasizing, <clears throat> but you know, this is America and it is mom's life. You know, and if she's got resources and that's where she wants to spend her resources, that's, you know, that's the point. Yeah. But I think that that's the other reason why, Drace, I think you really hit it on, on the note. It's, it's so important to have somebody so that you kind of figure out your options. And I would emphasize to folks so that you know what your options are in your area before you go to the hospital, because nobody wants to go to the hospital. But I will tell you, once you're in the hospital, their goal in the hospital is to get you out of the hospital. And if, mm -hmm. you know, they're going to go to the first place that's going to get you out of the hospital so that if, if you know what's in the area, so you know where you might want be wanting to go even for rehab, that's a big deal because otherwise they're going to pick one for you because, the, you know, they're in a hurry. Right. So so, you know, talking to these folks ahead of time is a big deal. Mm hmm. Susan, do you have any anecdotes of any specific examples of some interesting choices that people have had that they maybe threw it out there as just an idea, but you were able to bring that about? That's a good question. And it's, it's been definitely been different during the pandemic as well, um, which it brought its challenges. Um, but we still have been able to, you know, help people a lot um, while we've been all working remotely. And you know, the people, the consumers I've been working with have had to make some tough choices. And um, um, so it has been a little bit more difficult for everyone all around. Um, but, you know, the biggest part of my role, which I enjoy my job the most is to make people's lives easier. And, you know, especially with the benefit programs and health insurance, save them a little bit money um, month to month. Um, there's been a couple people who, you know, working um, over the pandemic with housing issues, and that's always been a struggle. But, you know, being able to get someone on emergency housing and get an apartment during this time has been um, amazing. Um, and, you know, the Mass Health and, and uh, has, has made it in, in the Department of Transitional Assistance, they've made it easier to apply for some of these benefit programs online. They've made it the application process much smoother. So some, a couple good things have happened because of this pandemic. <laughs> I was say, so if, if you like going online, they've made it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So luckily I can work with people uh, over the phone while I'm helping them apply for all these benefits, which has been great. Yeah. So that's and saving someone, yeah, saving someone $200 a month makes a world of difference. So it's been nice. So I think that's helpful, too, for people to know, even if they don't have a computer, they could connect with you by the phone oh, yes. and you can access whatever benefit program by way of the computer with them simply yeah. talking to you over the phone. Yeah, exactly. I think sometimes people just sort of throw their hands up and say, well, I, I can't go online. Exactly. I've never done that. How do I do it? And sometimes they don't even know that someone like you is there available to help them with that. Exactly. And also, you know, sometimes when I need a um, signatures for certain applications, I'll, you know, just drive over to their home and we'll stay separated by six feet and pass the clipboard back and forth to get some signatures. So we do what we have to do to make it work. Yep. Right. And I suppose, Grace, you know, people kind of assume since you're the senior center that 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 you're going to be there and that you're there for free. But as, as you as you suggest, you know, people don't realize that there are these other resources like BayPath, which mm -hmm. are also, you know, their tax dollars at work. You know, really, it's exactly. really the government trying to make life better for them that, you know, and they're not charging anything and they're trying to provide just good advice, just good advice, which is terrific. So you, Grace, you must be referring to these folks all the time. I would. Well, I bet this. I bet this comes up a lot, right? Yep. Bay, Bay Path provides this service, and it really is terrific for people to access it. Uh, people always are amazed. I didn't know there was that much available to me, uh, right. and it, it's great to 
to give those resources to people. And we do work with Lisa pretty closely. If I ever have questions, I'm always calling her and she'll reach out to me with if she's stumbling on something. So it's been great to have that. She's been there for a long time. <laughs> so I've yes. known her for, I've been at BPATH for eight years now. So it's been good to know her. And Cheryl Disney. is our other social services yes. person as well. Yes. yes, yes, which has been great. Yes, but we get referrals from the senior centers and the rehab centers and, and just people who are calling. The word of mouth is actually a, a, a big way of um, learning about different programs out there. So um, we get referrals from all sorts of different places. So definitely call Baypath anytime for sure. And are you typically available Monday through Friday? Yes. So yeah, I'm, I, I myself am Monday through Thursday, but our other options counselor, her name's Kelly Benet, Benet, she works Monday through Friday. So we're always available. Anything else you want to make sure that people know about the options counseling? And just that, you know, we're here to help you understand and make informed decisions about what you want for yourself. The whole goal is to, um, you know, focus on your goals and needs and preferences. Um, and we're here to help you do that. The whole point is to keep people where they want to be for as long as possible. And Susan, I know that the folks here at, 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 uh, at uh, Access Framingham uh, will be putting up your contact information and stuff. We'll have it on a banner. But just for the folks who are, who are watching, is there is there a best phone number? Is there like a, a genuine phone number where they can call and somebody will answer or get back to them soon, right? Yes, uh, so the, just the, the main Bay Path phone number um, is the 508-573-7200. And when you first, uh, you know, talk to, call into Bay Path, you'll get connected to an information referral specialist. Um, and they'll often, you know, send the phone call over to myself or Kelly, um, if, the, if they feel the person needs a little bit more handholding or wants more in-depth assistance with understanding what's out there. Great. That's great. And one other question I have is, how is it that you find the various resources that are available to people? Uh, what method does BayPath use to get all of that together? That is a great question because it's an ever-changing <laughs> answer. Um, there is uh, the resources out there are, are changing every day, um, and it is we use a team approach for sure. Um, we do get a lot of information about the health benefits and health and insurance from the monthly shine trainings we go to each month. Um, and our, we work very closely with our information referral department who are constantly building the resources um, that are out there in terms of, you know, we've mentioned the pets before, all the way to um, in-home hairdressers and podiatrists. So we have a variety in, of resources available, but we do also a lot of outreach. So we're constantly getting out there um, into the community during COVID, it's been more phone conversations and um, and virtual meetings, but we're constantly uh, contacting, you know, the assisted livings and um, the, you know, doctor's offices, various different agencies, just to build our knowledge and make sure we keep that connection. It's all about, that's the whole point of the ADRC is to uh, make these connections with community um um, agencies out there. So I imagine you need to do a lot of web surfing. Yes, definitely. So for all my Frank and Marys who never want to do web surfing ever, ever, <laughs> ever. Exactly. Oh, it's like being able to call her so that she can help you kind of do stuff online. They actually get a big charge out of doing this. It's <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So when we work very closely with a lot of the housing the subsidized housing, the public housing. Um, so the, a lot of the town agencies, so it's, you know, the veteran service officers, so there was, we do a lot of outreach to make sure they know about us and we know about them. So it's kind of twofold. So it's, um, so they know they can call us if they uh, need um, information and we can call them if we need more information. So 
it's never ending building our resources. I can imagine, you know, like I say, <laughs> once, once you print something up, it becomes it's outdated old. two days later. Exactly, exactly. So that's some ways that the internet has made things easier. Uh, we just keep, yes. check the page the next day, see what is new on it. Right, yes, exactly. This has really been wonderful, right? I, I, I know it, it, it so my, my job is, is, as you've probably gathered, Susan, is to provide comic relief and kind of watch the time. We're looking, we're looking at the time <laughs> so that we're, 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 we're close. Um, but it's, it's really been wonderful to have you on, you know, because I think you're, you, the Bay Path is so often, it's just to some extent underutilized because it isn't the senior center, you know. And so it's like, what is Bay Path? Is it just kind of one of those big organizations? They're going to charge me money. You know, is this going to be? They don't realize, they just don't realize that like, like what Grace does, it's just filled with people who are genuinely trying to help out, you know, right. and, exactly. and his job is to help you not have to go through what used to be the yellow pages and now is even worse because there's no place that you can kind of figure things out. It's, it's to help you kind of figure out all that stuff. So you know, exactly. we really appreciated your, your being here and Grace, you, you continue to be finding these terrific people, I think, to, to be really just helping folks. And soon, hopefully, right, we'll be doing this live with real people. And, you know, <laughs> who knows? Who knows what the future might bring, right? Yeah, so so, so. Th thanks a million, Susan, for coming on. Grace, thank you for finding these, continuing to find <laughs> these great guests, right? Folks, I hope you enjoy these shows, right? Grace does a great job of finding a whole variety of people. If, if you ever have any ideas regarding guests, give Grace a call, you know, uh, and we will look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Framingham. Thank you very much.